The prehistory of Egypt spans the period from earliest human settlement to the beginning of the early dynastic period of Egypt in c. 3100 BC, starting with the first pharaoh Nama. The pre-dynastic period is traditionally equivalent to the Neolithic period, beginning c. 6000 BC and including the protodynastic period. The dates of the pre-dynastic period were first defined before widespread archaeological excavation of Egypt took place, and recent finds indicating very gradual pre-dynastic development have led to controversy over when exactly the pre-dynastic period ended. Thus, the term protodynastic period, sometimes called the Zero Dynasty, has been used by scholars to name the part of the period which might be characterized as pre-dynastic by some and early dynastic by others. The pre-dynastic period is generally divided into cultural periods, each named after the place where a certain type of Egyptian settlement was first discovered. However, the same gradual development that characterizes the protodynastic period is present throughout the entire pre-dynastic period, and individual cultures must not be interpreted as separate entities but as largely subjective divisions used to facilitate study of the entire period. The vast majority of pre-dynastic archaeological finds have been in Upper Egypt because the silt of the Nile River was more heavily deposited at the Delta region, completely burying most Delta sites long before modern times. Late Paleolithic The Late Paleolithic in Egypt started around 30,000 BC. The Nazlit Kata skeleton was found in 1980 and dated in 1982 from nine samples ranging between 35,100 to 30,360 years. This specimen is the only complete modern human skeleton from the earliest Late Stone Age in Africa. Excavation of the Nile has exposed early stone tools. The earliest of these were located within the 100-foot terrace, and were Chelian, primitive Aculian and an Egyptian form of the Clactonian. Within the 50-foot terrace was developed Aculian, originally reported as early Mousterian but since changed to Livalitian implements were located in the 30-foot terrace. The 15 and 10-foot terraces saw a more developed version of the Lavalitian, also initially reported as an Egyptian version of Mousterian. Finally, an Egyptian version of Atarian and the Sabilian were located. Wadi Hafa Some of the oldest known buildings were discovered in Egypt by archaeologist Valdemar Shmielewski along the southern border near Wadi Hafa. They were mobile structures, easily disassembled, moved, and reassembled, providing hunter-gatherers with semi-permanent habitation. Itarian industry Itarian tool-making reached Egypt c. 40,000 BC. Cormuzan industry The Cormuzan industry in Egypt began between 40,000 and 30,000 BC. Cormuzans developed advanced tools not only from stone but also from animal bones and hematite. They also developed small arrowheads resembling those of Native Americans, but no bows have been found. The end of the Cormuzan industry came around 16,000 BC, with the appearance of other cultures in the region, including the Gemaean, Mesolithic, Harfan culture. The Harfan culture flourished along the Nile Valley of Egypt and Nubia between 18,000 and 15,000 BC. Though one Harfan site dates to before 24,000 BC, people survived on a diet of large herd animals and the Cormuzan tradition of fishing. Greater concentrations of artifacts indicate that they were not bound to seasonal wandering, but settled for longer periods. They are viewed as the parent culture of the Ibero-Morsian industry, which spread across the Sahara and into Spain. The Harfan culture was derived in turn from the Cormuzan, which depended on specialized hunting, fishing, and collecting techniques for survival. The primary material remains of this culture are stone tools, flakes, and a multitude of rock paintings. Kidan and Sabilian cultures about 20 archaeological sites in Upper Nubia give evidence for the existence of a grain-grinding Mesolithic culture. 
called the Kadan culture, which practiced wild grain harvesting along the Nile during the beginning of the Sahaba Daru Nile phase, when desiccation in the Sahara caused residents of the Libyan oases to retreat into the Nile Valley. Kidan peoples developed sickles and grinding stones to aid in the collecting and processing of these plant foods prior to consumption. However, there are no indications of the use of these tools after around 10,000 BC, when hunter-gatherers replaced them. In Egypt, analyses of pollen found at archaeological sites indicate that the Sabellian culture were gathering wheat and barley. Domesticated seeds were not found. It has been hypothesized that the sedentary lifestyle used by farmers led to increased warfare, which was detrimental to farming and brought this period to an end. Harafan culture The Harafans are viewed as migrating out of the fame in the eastern deserts of Egypt during the late Mesolithic to merge with the pre-pottery Neolithic B culture, whose tool assemblage resembles that of the Harafan. This assimilation led to the Circum-Arabian nomadic pastoral complex, a group of cultures that invented nomadic pastoralism, and may have been the original culture which spread proto-Semitic languages throughout Mesopotamia, Neolithic. Lower Egypt Feriyume culture continued expansion of the desert forced the early ancestors of the Egyptians to settle around the Nile more permanently, and adopt a more sedentary lifestyle. The period from 9000 to 6000 BC has left very little in the way of archaeological evidence. Around 6000 BC, Neolithic settlements appear all over Egypt. Studies based on morphological, genetic, and archaeological data have attributed these settlements to migrants from the Fertile Crescent in the Near East returning during the Egyptian and North African Neolithic, bringing agriculture to the region. However, other regions in Africa independently developed agriculture at about the same time, the Ethiopian highlands, the Sahel, and West Africa. However, some morphological and postcranial data has linked the earliest farming populations at Fayum, Merimda, and El Bidari to Near Eastern populations. The archaeological data suggests that Near Eastern domesticates were incorporated into a pre existing foraging strategy and only slowly developed into a full blown lifestyle, contrary to what would be expected from settler colonists from the Near East. Finally, the names for the Near Eastern domesticates imported into Egypt were not Sumerian or Proto-Semitic loan words, which further diminishes the likelihood of a mass immigrant colonization of Lower Egypt during the transition to agriculture. Weaving is evidence for the first time during the Feriyume period. People of this period, unlike later Egyptians, buried their dead very close to, and sometimes inside, their settlements. Although archaeological sites reveal very little about this time, an examination of the many Egyptian words for city provides a hypothetical list of reasons why the Egyptians settled. In Upper Egypt, terminology indicates trade, protection of livestock, high ground for flood refuge, and sacred sites for deities. Merimda culture from about 5000 to 4200 BC The Merimda culture, so far only known from a big settlement site at the edge of the western delta, flourished in Lower Egypt. The culture has strong connections to the Feriyume culture as well as the Levant. People lived in small huts, produced a simple undecorated pottery and had stone tools. Cattle, sheep, goats and pigs were held. Wheat, sorghum and barley were planted. The Merimda people buried their dead within the settlement and produced clay figurines. The first Egyptian life-size head made of clay comes from Merimda. El Omeri culture The El Omeri culture is known from a small settlement near modern Cairo. People seem to have lived in huts, but only post holes and pits survive. The pottery is undecorated. Stone tools include small flakes, axes and sickles. Metal was not yet known. Their sites were occupied from 4000 BC to the Archaic period. Mardi culture The Mardi culture is the most important lower Egyptian prehistoric culture contemporary with Nakhada I and two phases in Upper Egypt. 
The culture is best known from the site Mardi near Cairo, but is also attested in many other places in the Delta to the Fayum region. Copper was known, and some copper edges have been found. The pottery is simple and undecorated and shows, in some forms, strong connections to southern Israel. People lived in small huts, partly dug into the ground. The dead were buried in cemeteries, but with few burial goods. The Mahdi culture was replaced by the Nakada the third culture, whether this happened by conquest or infiltration is still an open question. Upper Egypt Tajan culture The Tajan culture was the next in Upper Egypt. This culture group is named for the burials found at Deir Tassa, on the east bank of the Nile between Asiat and Akmam. The Tajan culture group is notable for producing the earliest blacktop ware, a type of red and brown pottery that is painted black on the top and interior. This pottery is vital to the dating of pre-dynastic Egypt. Because all dates for the pre-dynastic period are tenuous at best, WMF Petrie developed a system called sequence dating by which the relative date if not the absolute date, of any given pre-dynastic site can be ascertained by examining its pottery. As the pre-dynastic period progressed, the handles on pottery evolved from functional to ornamental, and the degree to which any given archaeological site has functional or ornamental pottery can be used to determine the relative date of the site. Since there is little difference between Tajan and Badarian pottery, the Tajan culture overlaps the Badarian range significantly. From the Tajan period onward, it appears that Upper Egypt was influenced strongly by the culture of Lower Egypt. Badarian culture The Badarian culture, from about 4400 to 4000 BC, is named for the Badari site near Der Tassa. It followed the Tajan culture, but was so similar that many consider them one continuous period. The Badarian culture continued to produce the kind of pottery called black top ware and was assigned sequence dating numbers chapters 21 to 29. The primary difference that prevents scholars from merging the two periods is that Badarian sites use copper in addition to stone and are thus chalcolithic settlements, while the Neolithic Tajan sites are still considered Stone Age. Badarian flint tools continue to develop into sharper and or shapely blades, and the first faience was developed. Distinctly Badarian sites have been located from Nekin to a little north of Abydos. It appears that the Fayume culture in the Badarian and Tajan periods overlap significantly, however, the Fayume culture was considerably less agricultural and was still Neolithic in nature. Nakada culture Amration culture The Amration culture lasted from about 4000 to 3500 BC. It is named after the site of El Amra, about 120 km south of Badari. El Amra is the first site where this culture group was found unmingled with the later Gerzian culture group. But this period is better attested at the Nakada site, so it also is referred to as the Nakada the first culture. Black topped ware continues to appear, but white cross line ware, a type of pottery which has been decorated with close parallel white lines being crossed by another set of close parallel white lines is also found at this time. The Amration period falls between SD 30 and 39 in Pratri's sequence dating system. Newly excavated objects attest to increased trade between Upper and Lower Egypt at this time. A stone vase from the north was found at Al Amra, and copper, which is not mined in Egypt, was imported from the Sinai, or possibly Nubia. Obsidian and a small amount of gold were both definitely imported from Nubia. Trade with the oases also was likely. New innovations appeared in Amration settlements as precursors to later cultural periods. For example, the mud-brick buildings for which the Gerzian period is known were first seen in Amration times, but only in small numbers. Additionally, oval and theriomorphic cosmetic palettes appear in this period. But the workmanship is very rudimentary and the relief artwork for which they were later known is not yet present. Gerzian culture The Gerzian culture, from about 3500 to 3200 BC, is named after the site of Gertzer, 
It was the next stage in Egyptian cultural development, and it was during this time that the foundation of dynastic Egypt was laid. Gerzian culture is largely an unbroken development out of Amration culture, starting in the Delta and moving south through Upper Egypt, but failing to dislodge Amration culture in Nubia. Gerzian pottery is assigned values from SD. 40 through 62, and is distinctly different from Amration white cross-lined wares or black-topped ware. Gerzian pottery was painted mostly in dark red with pictures of animals, people, and ships, as well as geometric symbols that appeared derived from animals. Also, wavy, handles, red before this period became more common and more elaborate until they were almost completely ornamental. Gerzian culture coincided with a significant decline in rainfall, and farming along the Nile now produced the vast majority of food. Though contemporary paintings indicate that hunting was not entirely foregone, with increased food supplies, Egyptians adopted a much more sedentary lifestyle and cities grew, as large as 5,000. It was in this time that Egyptian city dwellers stopped building with reds and began mass-producing mud bricks, first found in the Amration period, to build their cities. Egyptian stone tools, while still in use, moved from bifacial construction to ripple-flaked construction. Copper was used for all kinds of tools, and the first copper weaponry appears here. Silver, gold, lapis, and faience were used ornamentally and the grinding palettes used for eye paint since the Badarian period began to be adorned with relief carvings. The first tombs in classic Egyptian style were also built, modelled after ordinary houses and sometimes composed of multiple rooms. Although further excavations in the delta are needed, this style is generally believed to originate there and not in Upper Egypt. Although the Gerzian culture is now clearly identified as being the continuation of the Amration period, significant amounts of Mesopotamian influences worked their way into Egypt during the Gerzian which were interpreted in previous years as evidence of a Mesopotamian ruling class, the so-called dynastic race, coming to power over Upper Egypt. This idea no longer attracts academic support. Distinctly foreign objects and art forms entered Egypt during this period, indicating contacts with several parts of Asia. Objects such as the Gebel El Arik knife handle, which has patently Mesopotamian relief carvings on it, have been found in Egypt, and the silver which appears in this period can only have been obtained from Asia Minor. In addition, Egyptian objects are created which clearly mimic Mesopotamian forms, although not slavishly. Cylinder seals appear in Egypt, as well as recessed panelling architecture. The Egyptian reliefs on cosmetic palettes are clearly made in the same style as the contemporary Mesopotamian Duric culture, and the ceremonial mace heads which turn up from the late Gerzian and early Semenon are crafted in the Mesopotamian pear-shaped style, instead of the Egyptian native style. The root of this trade is difficult to determine, but contact with Canaan does not predate the early dynastic so it is usually assumed to have been by water. During the time when the dynastic race theory was still popular, it was theorized that Arik sailors circumnavigated Arabia, but Mediterranean route, probably by middlemen through Byblos is more likely, as evidenced by the presence of Biblian objects in Egypt. The fact that so many Gerzian sites are at the mouths of Wadis which lead to the Red Sea may indicate some amount of trade via the Red Sea. Also, it is considered unlikely that something as complicated as recessed panel architecture could have worked its way into Egypt by proxy, and at least a small contingent of migrants is often suspected. Despite this evidence of foreign influence, Egyptologists generally agree that the Gerzian culture is still predominantly indigenous to Egypt. Protodynastic period the Nakada the third period, from about 3200 to 3000 BC, is generally taken to be identical with the protodynastic period, during which Egypt was unified. Nakada III is notable for being the first era with hieroglyphs, 
the first regular use of serix, the first irrigation, and the first appearance of royal cemeteries. Timeline Late Paleolithic, from 40th millennium BC Atarian tool making, semi permanent dwellings in Wadi Hafa tools made from animal bones, hematite, and other stones. Neolithic, from 11th millennium BCC, 10,500 BC, wild grain harvesting along the Nile, grain grinding culture creates world's earliest stone sickle blades roughly at end of Pleistocene c. 8000 BC, migration of peoples to the Nile, developing a more centralized society and settled agricultural economy c. 7500 BC, importing animals from Asia to Sahara c. 7000 BC, agriculture, animal and cereal, in East Sahara c. 7000 BC, in Nabta Playa deep year-round water wells dug, and large organized settlements designed in planned arrangements c. 6000 BC, rudimentary ships depicted in Egyptian rock art c. 5500 BC, stone-roofed subterranean chambers and other subterranean complexes in Nabta Playa containing buried sacrifice cattle c. 5000 BC, alleged archaeoastronomical stone megalith in Nabta Playa c. 5000 BC, Badarian, furniture, tableware, models of rectangular houses, pots, dishes, cups, bowls, vases, figurines, comb c. 4400 BC, finely woven linen fragment, inventing prevalent, from 4th millennium BC by 3400 BC, cosmetics donkey domestication ironworks more to see, 4000 BC, early Nakadan trade 4th millennium BC, Gerzian tomb building, including underground rooms and burial of furniture and amulets 4th millennium BC, cedar imported from Lebanon c. 3900 BC, an aridification event in the Sahara leads to human migration to the Nile Valley c. 3500 BC, lapis lazuli imported from Bidakshan and or Mesopotamia c. 3300 BC, double reed instruments and lyres c. 3500 BC, Senate, world's oldest board game c. 3500 BC, Fiance, world's earliest known glazed ceramic bead c. 3100 BC, Pharaoh Nama unified Upper and Lower Egypt.